My name is Marty Baylor and I'm a professor of physics at Carleton College. I really enjoy teaching the physics classes that involve electricity, magnetism, and optics, which might not surprise you since I'm going to be talking to you later about light. So our problem of the week deals with light. And many of you are familiar with light because you know lenses and shadows. And from our experience, we would say that light acts like a particle. That is, it moves in straight lines. Well, around the 1800s, there was lots of evidence that was mounting that said that light was actually more like a wave. And then atomic physics came along and showed that light could also act as a particle. And so there's this ongoing controversy of, is light a particle or is light a wave? But we're going to put that aside for right now and focus on light as a wave. So let's say that we represent the amplitude of our wave as a function of position. So this is a distance x and a height y. And so let's draw our wave. And you can see that it's a sinusoidally varying function of position. And we can label the amplitude, which is the height. And we can see that we have some peaks and some troughs. And then it's helpful to keep track of the distance between the peaks or the distance between the troughs. And we call this distance the wavelength, represented by the Greek letter lambda. And so this is a common representation of a wave that you would see. And this could be a light wave, or it could be a sound wave, or a string, anything that has a, a wave-like property. But this is not the only representation of a wave that we have. We can also represent it by looking down from the top. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent the wave that we have just drawn as a function of position looking down from the top. And so I'm going to imagine that this wave is actually um, extending both into and out of the board. And I'm going to draw what I see from the top, which is a line of peaks that are represented by these lines. And the troughs are just represented by this empty space. And even in this diagram, I can see the wavelength. So now that we've finished talking about how we represent waves, now we're going to talk about two special properties of waves, namely interference and diffraction. Diffraction occurs when a wave interacts with some type of obstacle. An example of an obstacle might be a slit. When light passes through a slit that is approximately the same width as the wavelength of the light, then we find that the light actually spreads out as it goes through the aperture. If light were a particle, then what we would expect is that the spot of light that we would see on a screen would be the same size as the aperture. However, as we shrink that aperture and make it smaller and smaller, we see that the light spreads out more and more. And so this diffraction allows light to bend around objects and happens with lots of other waves too, like water and sound. So diffraction is the reason why we can hear around corners and why you can pick up a radio signal even though a house is hidden behind a hill. The next property of light that's important is interference. Interference occurs when two waves come together and overlap with each other. When we have two waves interact so that their peaks and troughs overlap with each other, then we get constructive interference where the amplitudes add and are twice as big as they were before. That means that the peak is twice as high and the trough is twice as low. If instead the peak of one wave corresponds to the trough of another and vice versa, we have destructive interference. And in this case, the amplitudes subtract and we end up with decreased amplitude. Or if the amplitudes are the same, we end up with no wave at all. So why are interference and diffraction important? Well, it turns out that if you shine light on a blood cell, then you can get information about the size and shape by looking at the interference and diffraction patterns that are produced. You can also shine light on a rock or a crystal, and you can get information about the crystalline planes and their spacing and what materials they are made of. And so interference and diffraction are very valuable tools in physics, in biology, in geology for understanding 
the things that we're curious and learning about. In your problem this week, you are going to apply mathematics to understand the relationship between light and how it interacts with different materials.